Okay, we ran over our 10-minute limit in that last group, so I hope that YouTube forgives us a little bit. Usually they do. Uh, like we were saying, the sphingolipidosis represents the largest group of diseases that I personally have a hard time pronouncing the names of. Uh, the classical buildup of this family of compounds called sphingolipids is a gangliocide. It's a type of sphingolipid that accumulates in neurons, and that's why it's called a gangliocide. About uh, one out of 30 Ashkenazi Jews are carriers or heterozygous for this situation, and when the homozygous state occurs, and you could do the math, 1 30th times 1 30th, the disease is present. Because it builds up in the brain, it produces severe neurologic problems of various types. Uh, one classical thing about uh, Tay-Sachs disease is that it always has uh, a classical cherry red spot right in the middle of the macula. And I guarantee you, if you see a macula on your boards that has a nice red spot in the middle, you should know as a knee-jerk reflex, that's Tay-Sachs disease. Uh, let's move on to our next category of diseases called the sulfatidoses. And if I mispronounce that, I apologize. Once again, there's a whole wide variety of them. But if uh, you hear the name uh, leukodystrophy, in other words, accumulations in uh, white matter or myelin, uh, like crab disease, Fabre disease, Gaucher's disease, Neiman Pick disease. We're dealing then with the sulfatidoses, in which you have uh, genetic defects involving enzymes which fail to process these compounds, and therefore the sulfatides, the cerebrosides, and the sphingomyelin then accumulates in places which cause clinical disease. Uh, Neiman Pick is the most uh, widely um, known and famous and earliest discovered disease in this category of sulfatidoses. There's three different types, and in it, the buildup is a sulfatide called sphingomyelin. Uh, clinically, a lot of things can happen, but uh, the net result is causes massive splenomegaly. It's one of the uh, causes of massive splenomegaly, like the chronic leukemias. And it's a very serious disease, uh, even though there's three different types and some are more serious than others, and often uh, expresses itself relatively early in life with organomegaly and CNS disorders, especially uh, splenomegaly. Gaucher's disease is built up of a glucocerebroside. Uh, there's several types, but 99% are type 1, in which there is no CNS involvement. So you could probably guess that the others have CNS involvement. And the reason why Gaucher's disease is, is common is because very often a pathologist or a hematologist will do a bone marrow and he'll see these foamy macrophages in the bone marrow, which is one place the Gaucher cells are seen very readily. And they look like this with regular light microscopy. And these macrophages look like this with buildup of this glucocerebroside on electron microscopy. Uh, and that's all we'll say about Gaucher's disease. The mucopolysaccharides when they have defects involved with processing them, they can build up. The classical two diseases are Hurler disease and Hunter disease for types 1 and 2, respectively. Uh, Buildup of dermatan sulfate or heparin sulfate is also part of the group of diseases called mucopolysaccharides, and in them, uh, you will see uh, coarse facial features, clouding of the cornea, joint stiffness, mental retardation, and 
this is a case where there's even urinary excretion of the sulfate. So this is a case where a urine test could help you. And many of the others, it does not accumulate in the urine. It just builds up in organs and in macrophages. Uh, let's uh, end this saga, or try to end it, by saying that there's uh, many other lysosomal storage diseases. There's the fucosidoses, the manosidoses, there's a disease called aspartyl glycosaminuria. There's Wolman's disease, which is a buildup of cholesterides, cholesterol and triglycerides. And there's an acid phosphatase deficiency, acid phosphate deficiency, in which you have buildup of uh, phosphate esters. And there's a little typo here, as you can see. I'm almost sure this would be acid phosphatase deficiency. So we just corrected that. Uh, it wouldn't be fair to mention uh, alcaptonuria at the end. And remember, this is not a lysosomal uh, enzyme disease, but it was the first one to be described uh, many years ago. And in alcaptonuria, you have buildup of homogentisic acid because of the inability of its enzyme, homogentisic acid oxidase, to uh, be there. And therefore, homogentisic acid accumulates in tissues like urine, uh, like nails, and uh, in joint cartilage can cause a severe arthritis. And uh, here we have really black urine with a patient with alcaptonuria. Here you can see the cartilage of the ear appearing black even through the thin layer of skin. And here you can see really dark nails as well. Uh, microscopically, if you took a section through these areas, you would see buildup of this dark brown pigment uh, in the dermis and on the basis of these little patches of pigment here and there. Uh, that is what causes the discoloration uh, grossly. Let's talk about another genetic disease, in this case autosomal dominant, called neurofibromatosis. Uh, very complex genetics, very interesting disease, uh, but let's try to make it as simple as possible. There's two kinds of neurofibromatosis. There's one and there's two. Neurofibromatosis one is classical von Recklinghausen diseases in which you have multiple neurofibromas and they look like this microscopically they a little composed of little spindly type cells grossly they're little bumps perhaps slightly pigmented they are also associated uh, with cafe au lait spots they're called cafe au lait because they're the color of coffee they're brown and they're not uh, really uh, tumors or bumps like the neurofibromas, they're just pigmented areas. In addition, in neurofibromatosis, you can see little pigmented areas in the iris as well. So these are the three things you see classically with neurofibromatosis number one. And in every case, they are really neurofibromas, uh, which are the tumor aspect of them. In neurofibromatosis number two, you also have tumors but they are generally acoustic neuromas and meningiomas. So if you could see here in the cerebellar pontine angle, you could see, in this case, bilateral acoustic neuromas on each side. This is an MRI scan. And uh, in probably one of these cases here, you could see some... Oh, actually, I'm having a hard time finding meningiomas in here. That's probably one right there at the tip of the arrow. Uh, these are uh, features of neurofibromatosis too. Let's make this very simple. Neurofibromatosis 1 is Ron, Le Ron Van Recklinghausen. It has neurofibromas. And in number 2, you have acoustic neuromas and multiple meningiomas. In both cases, they're limited generally to the central nervous system. Okay, uh, we'll call this the end of the uh, lysosomal storage and neurofibromatosis fibromatosis category and move on to some more interesting things. Thank you very much.